more about it than Barrow and Grenock. <laughs> oh, well, I'll tell you. I'm very glad to see everyone here. I tell you, we're going to have a great next one. And before we go, we won't need to forget to have a, a wee joke and Doris. <laughs> Scottish custom that has stood the test of time. It's a custom that's been carried out in every land and clime where brother Scots foregather. It's I the usual thing. Just before we say good next, we fill our cups and sing. Just a wee jock and Doris, just a wee drap at all, just a wee jock and Doris, before we gang a war. There's a wee wifey waiting, and a wee butt in bed. If you can say it's a bra brush, moonlight next, will you roar right? You can, just a wee jock and Doris. Just a wee drop a door, just a wee jock and Doris, before we gang a war. There's a wee wife a waiting, and a wee button bang. If you can say it's a bra brush, moon licht next, will you roar right? You can <laughs> I like a man that is a man, a man that's straight and fair, a sort of man who will and can, and all things do his share. I like a man, a jolly man, the sort of man you know, <laughs> the chap that slaps your back and says, man, joke before we go. Just a wee joke and Doris, just a wee drop at all, just a wee joke and Doris, before we gang a walk, there's a wee wife waiting, and a wee button pen. If you can say it's a bra brush, moon licks next, will you roar right? You can, just a wee joke and Doris, just a wee drop at all, just a wee jock and Doris, before we gang a war. There's a wee wifey waiting, and a wee button bend. If you can say it's a bra brush, moon licks next, will you roar right? You can. <laughs> I have Robrecht, Moonlecht, next the next day. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> I hope we'll meet many another next. <laughs> Good next, the next. <laughs> And I never, never grieve. I take things very easy, but I can't take a leave. And I work the whole week round for early morn till late at night. And on Saturday, I eagerly look forward with delight to beautiful Sunday. I wish it would never come Monday, cause I lie between the sheets, my bed adorning. Oh, it's very nice, yes, it's very, very nice to get your breakfast in your bed on Sunday morning. <laughs> What joy, what great delight it is to hear the kirk bells ring 
I wouldn't miss their welcome sound, no, not for anything. When they commence to ring, arise, I and I, and I go and I have a bit squinter of the windy, but if I think it's going to rain, I just fill my pipe and licked it, and I go back to bed again. I man, it's a terrible thing to rise you among the blankets, especially on a frosty morning. Eh? Oh, I say, does ever any of you chaps ever waken on a beautiful Sunday morning about half past six, and then open your eyes? <laughs> if you were able to open them. <laughs> And there you're lying there, you know. Did you ever lie there and realize that you didn't have to rise and go to your work? Isn't that a lovely feeling? Oh, man. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, it's lo oh, it's lovely, man. <laughs> you lie there, you know, and you hear the canaries singing in the room, you know. Uh, and, <laughs> and there the white cheese in the kitchen, you know, washing the dishes <laughs> and breaking them. <laughs> Uh, and you're lying in your bed, you know, and you, you can hear the ham and eggs curling in the pan. Oh, mind, I'm telling you. <laughs> Beautiful Sunday. I wish it would never come Monday, cause I lie between the sheets of my bed adorned. Oh, it's very nice. Man, it's very, very nice to get your breakfast in your bed on Sunday morning. Beautiful Sunday. I wish it would never come Monday, cause the life between the sheets of bed adornment. Oh, it's very nice. It's very, very nice to get your breakfast. Oh, boy, what a treat. <laughs> One of the treats of civilization is to get your breakfast in your bed on Sunday morning. <laughs> aye, aye. Ah, well, goodbye. <laughs> I went to a tea party three weeks ago. I had never been at one before. I was dressed up in my best just like this and got there at a quarter to four. And the lassie that served me my tea was a queen, one of the bonniest I've ever seen. Susie McLean is her name, and I'll tell I've never done anything but sing to myself since I met her. Susie McLean, when are you going to change your name? Just say the word, and I'll make you my wife, and I'll love you forever the rest of your life. <laughs> I asked her if she ever had been in love, and she told me that she never had. Well, I said, you're a love, oh, I said, you're a dove, but she just said, away you, you're mad. <laughs> I teased her and squeezed her, she said I was rough. Then she gave me a cuff on the jaw with her muff. But when I got him, I sat down and wrote a letter to tell her, and this is the note that I wrote her. Susie McLean, when are you going to change your name? Just say the word and I'll make you my wife and I'll love you the rest of your life. <laughs> Our father and mother invited me soon to the house because they wanted to see Susie's selection and so I went down for a chat and a wee cup of tea. We strolled down the garden, sat under a tree. It got dark and then darker than I couldn't see. But when the moon came out onto the scene, I snuggled close. She said, what do you mean? I said, <laughs> Susie McLean, 
when are you going to change your name? Just say the word and I'll make you my wife and I'll love you forever the rest of your life. <laughs> You know, I believe there are dozens of young chaps here, you know, in love with some girl or another. But just for the want of that something, you know, gumption. Aye, that's the word gumption. Just for the want of gumption, you don't know who to go about it in a successful direction. Well, then I'm going to try and help you. Aye, I've written a book on love. Aye, and it's entitled The Only Way. Aye. <laughs> and it commences by starting at the beginning. Uh, it says that love is an inspiration in conversation and consultation. After consultation, there is jubilation. After jubilation, there is oscillation. Then after oscillation, there is a hesitation. After the hesitation, there is a, a sort of a separation. Then after the separation, there is another consultation with deliberation. Then another conclusion, which sometimes turns the whole thing into a delusion terminating in confusion. But, aye, but, <laughs> but, <laughs> but mind, I'm going to tell you, <laughs> if you follow these directions, <laughs> you'll never go on the rocks. That's the way I went about it with Susie. <laughs> Susie McLean. When are you going to change your name? Just say the word and I'll make you my wife and I'll love you forever the rest of your life. <laughs> oh, I could eat you. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> I've been a very lonely fella for a while I'm thinking it's because I miss my bonny lassie smile oh, I left her just to kiss her if my love for her is true And it must be true because I feel I'm burning through and through Oh, how I weary for you, sweetheart. I'm never cheery when we are apart. Nights are lonely, days are blue. Oh, how I weary, dearie, for you. No, I am back again to Glasgow on the Clyde. I'm gonna stay forever by my bonny lassie's side. Oh, the ecstasy of oh, seeing soon my Maggie's bonny face and the scrumptiousness of being locked in Maggie's fond embrace. <laughs> Oh, how I weary for you, sweetheart. I'm never cheery when we are apart. Nights are lonely, days are blue. Oh, how I weary, dearie, for you. When I get settled up, I'll try and settle doon. And I'll do my very best to be a credit to the tune. Oh, for we a wife like Maggie, I'll confess this world's care. I feel I'll be a gladiator, feel I'll do it dear. <laughs> Man, I would dare anything for Maggie. Oh, she's Bonnie. <laughs> you know, my love affair with Maggie is a romance. <laughs> it was one night, oh, it was a miserable night, and I was like the night. And I happened to meet Jock Lowry. So Jock said to me, what fun were you, Jimmy? I said, what do you see? He says, you've got a face like a glass of milk. Have you been ill? I said, well, I'm ill at ease. He said, well, what is the matter? I said, you know, we Maggie McClintock. 
<laughs> he says, Maggie McClinton, we Maggie McClintock, <laughs> the bonniest lassie in the East End of Glasgow. <laughs> well, I said, that's what's the matter. Maggie's in love with me, but I don't know whether I'm in love with Maggie or no. What would you advise me to do? He said, go abroad. I said, where? Oh, India, Africa, China, or America, or Canada, or Australia. <laughs> I said, I'll think the matter over. So I did. And I went to Fife. Oh, but I might as well have stayed at home. <laughs> I wasn't two days away from Maggie when, oh, when I was thinking about her. Of course, she doesn't know I'm back. But I'll go on the phone where the morning's morning whenever I get my porridge. And I'll say, Maggie, is that you? And Maggie will say, aye. Well, I'll say to her, Maggie, <laughs> are you listening, Maggie? And Maggie will say, aye, I'm listening, Jimmy. Well, I'll say, listen to this, Maggie. <laughs> Oh, how I weary for you, sweetheart. I'm never cheery when we are apart. Nights are lonely, days are blue. Oh, how I weary, dearie. Not bonny. Well, this is a shanty song, a shanty song, suggested on one of my trips across the Atlantic, and I dedicate this song to every sailor who sails the sea. There is somebody waiting for me. Once on a time, it's a very long time, it's a year or it may be three. I was out of a job and I didn't have a bob when an old car said to me, Would you like to come and have some fun while you're young and stout and strong? So the very next day we sailed away. To this good old shanty song There is somebody waiting for me In an old cabin down by the sea In the land where I wish I could be There is somebody waiting for me, there is somebody waiting for me, in an old cabin down by the sea, in the land where I wish I could be, there is somebody waiting for me. I know a face, it's a very sweet face, it's the face of my very best girl. I have seen all sorts in the different ports as I've sailed all round the world. On my last trip east, I had a rare old beast. I've the taste still on my tongue. But when I sailed west to my very, very best little girl again, I sung. There is somebody waiting for me 
in an old cabin down by the sea, in the land where I wish I could be, there is somebody waiting for me. There is somebody waiting for me. In an old cabin down by the sea, in the land where I wish I could be, there is somebody waiting for me. There is somebody waiting for me. <laughs> of course, I'm going to tell you about Maggie. <laughs> you see, Maggie's wee house is quite close to our house. Well, when I say our house, I mean that, as my mother's house. Well, to show you, well, there's my mother's wee house here, as it were, you see. And then there's the hill. Well, the hill runs down in front of my mother's wee house, you see. And of course, mine it runs up at the back too. Then in front of my mother's wee house, there's a great oat bonnie. Wild fuchsias, you know. Oh, great, oh, lots of them. Thousands of them on the bush. Then there's a wee footpath down past the fuchsias. Well, the wee footpath, you see, runs down onto the big road. And then the big road runs along to the right. Of course, it runs along to the left too, see? I mean, also, at the same time. And then on the other side of the big road, then there's the hedge. And then uh, over the hedge, there's a field. And right away down at the, at, the, at the bottom of the field, there's a loch. You see, the loch keeps the field from falling into the water, as it were. Well, then, then Maggie's wee hoose, when you leave my mother's wee hoose, you, to go to Maggie's wee hoose, it's like you go round the bend of the hill. Just the very same as if, well, you know what I mean. Uh, it's uh, just... Where you are sitting there, well, of course, you can't see Maggie's wee hoose. Well, that's the wee hoose that I'm going to tell you about. <laughs> the wee hoose among the heather. There's a wee hoose on the hillside that I haven't seen for years. I've an awful longing feeling on my eyes while dwell with tears. When I think on all the happy days I spent beside that spot, and the games we played when laddies are there, will never be forgotten. Though I'm far away from Scotland and the scenes I lose the will, there's a beat for the old country that in every pulse I feel. For the other lands are bonny and the other folks are kind, there is one seed and one only that is ever in my mind. There's a wee whose mind the heather, there's a wee whose o'er the sea, and there's a land in yon wee whose waiting patiently for me. 
She's the picture of perfection. Oh, I wouldn't tell a lie. Could you see her? You would love her just the same. myself before in all my life. I've never had a holiday away without my wife. And I've never felt so happy. And I've never been so free. I would give a gold and silver cup to know what's wrong with me. I would. I'd give. Well, you know what I mean. I'd give anything but money. <laughs> anything to know the cause of my exuberative viciousness. <laughs> I, <laughs> Panty, 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 I'm going away for two weeks holiday and I've got two weeks pay in my pooch and my wife is in the hospital with a broken leg. <laughs> of course, mind you, when the accident happened, I was very sorry. <laughs> oh, I was very, I could have cried, but I didn't. <laughs> it wasn't the time to cry. It was time for action. I had to get her to the hospital. And after I got her to the hospital and saw that she was comfortably, comfortably situated, I went home to my wee kitchen and I sat down and I ate four tins of sardines. <laughs> I wish you could have seen my tongue in the morning. <laughs> I had a coat and a pair of trousers hanging on it. <laughs> uh, but that didn't stop me from singing. <laughs> For I've just got off the chain, I've just got off the chain, feeling as happy as a lot of ducks among the rain. I'm gonna be having the time of my life away from Mrs. McBain because she'll maybe never get the chance to break her leg again. <laughs> I've been a very happy man all through my married life. But just like other married men, I've been subject to my wife. But mind, I've always been a man. I have always stood my ground. But I must admit, I've often been knocked out in the first round. <laughs> yes, and where is the married man that can sit here and truthfully say that he has never been knocked out during the whole of his married life? Oh, I would love to see him. Will he please stand up? <laughs> No, he's not here tonight. <laughs> I remember one night there was Thompson, Samson, Simpson, Dixon, Johnson, Gibson, and Nelson, and we were all in the Black Bull. We were all in a little back room having a game at the dominoes. <laughs> and then they would have me to make a speech. <laughs> I said, the only speech that I can make, I said, is on domesticity. So I rose and I said, well, no, I'm going to tell you this. And I say this without fear. Mind you, I say this without fear. There's a fine expression for a married man to use. I say this without fear. That I, that I am Caesar. I am Caesar in my own house. When the room door opened and my wife stuck her head in and she said, Caesar, home. <laughs> did I go? You bet I did. <laughs> I was home a quarter of an hour before her and took up my position below the bed. Of course, when she came in, she ordered me out. I said, no, nothing. Oh, I wish you could have heard what I said to her <laughs> and to myself. <laughs> yes, go on. Giggle, giggle. I know what you're giggling at, but... <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> you think I went home because I was afraid of my wife? Well, you're wrong. It's not true. Well, why did I go home? Ha, 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 ha. As an example to the rest of them who were there. Just got off the chain. I've just got off the chain. 
I'm feeling as happy as a lot of ducks among the rain. I'm going to be having the time of my life away from Mrs. McBain because she'll maybe never get the chance to break her leg again. I've just got off the chain. I've just got off the chain. I'm feeling as happy as a lot of ducks among the rain. I'm going to be having the time of my life away from Mrs. McBain because she'll maybe never get the chance to break her leg again. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. I'm away for my holiday. <laughs> Yes, I know. <laughs> Have you not had enough? <laughs> oh, Rex, oh, Rex, I know. I know what you want. <laughs> I knew you were a Scotch, wanting as much as you can for your money. Well, listen. Away in the Northland, the land of the mountain, there stands a wee hoose on the breach to the breeze. A streamlet runs past like a clear crystal fountain. The lark in the sky sings an ear haunting lay. Away in the wild wood the red deer is bounding. The wind carries sweetly the scent of the pine. Afar in the valley the peabrook is sounding. The scenes of my childhood, my dear Scottish hymn, hymn of mine, hymn of mine, where I dwelt in long, long time. There's where my heart and my thoughts are forever in that we thank it caught it that dear him oh mine. <laughs> I know it ever has been and will continue, I believe. That a Scot is a Scot, no matter in what land he be. He always takes us something with him far across the sea. The love of him, the glow of fame, I seem to hover run. And when they meet as we him met, they all creep close and croon. Sing us a simple melody, sing us a simple tune. Take us back to Scotland when the bluebells are blooming in June. Sing the songs we used to sing when we were toddle and run. Man, it's just like being at him the new in Edinburgh tune. The name of Scotland seems to thrill the very pulse for men. Is it because we're plain folks pray a humble button bain? Or is it because we like fair play and always play the game and can settle doon to circumstance but? We I that thought o him sing us a simple melody, sing us a simple tune. Take us back to Scotland when the bluebells are blooming in June. Sing the songs we used to sing when we were toddle and run. Man, it's just like being at him the day and dear old Glasgow tune. <laughs> I say, do you remember? A little song that you used to hear your mother sing. <laughs> My mother used to sing one. Sing me the songs my mother used to sing. They are the songs always seem to cling. Round our hearts what memories they bring. When I hear the simple song my mother used to sing, you're my bonny, bonny, wee, bonny, wee. You're my bonny, my bonny, wee. You're my bonny, bonny, wee. You're my bonny, bonny, wee, bonny, wee. Shh. 
he's sleeping. Ah, well, good night. Enjoy, be with you. Good night. <laughs> Oh, that's all right, boys. Wait a minute. I'm with you. I haven't retired yet. Oh, no. I'm going to go right on to the end of the road. Every road through life is a long, long road filled with joys and sorrows, too. As we journey on, how your heart may yearn for the things most dear to you. With wealth and love to show, but onward we must go. Keep right on to the end of the road. Keep right on to the end. If the way be long, let your heart be strong. Keep right on round the bend. If you're tired and weary, still journey on till you come to your happy abode. Where all you love and you dream it will be there. At the end of the road With a big stout heart to a long steep hill We may get there with a smile With a good kind thought and an end in view we can cut short many a mile. So let courage every day be our guiding star always. Keep right on to the end of the road. Keep right on to the end. If the way be long, let your heart be Strong, keep right on round the bend. If you're tired and weary, still journey on till you come to your happy abode, where all you love and your dreaming of will be there at the end. Of the road, keep right on to the end of the road, keep right on to the end. If the way be long, let your heart be strong, keep right on round the bend. If you're tired and weary, still journey on till you come to your happy abode, where all you love and you believe in God will be there at the end of the road.